Hey there friends, Nibs again. Out here in the backyard doing a little bit of goofing around today. <clears throat> Just got a, a couple of new guys that uh, are on loan to the channel for a little while for me to check out and review and this other one over here needs a little bit of just a little bit of repair work, but uh, nothing too major. But uh, the first one we have here is a Crossman Model 766. And uh, let's see, by the serial number on this one, uh, I believe this was made in probably around 1980. And uh, very, very close to a 2100. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the differences are on them. We'll do a little bit more deep dive on that down the road. That one's pretty good. It need only thing it needs is the uh, the BB feeding mechanism and spring. It's for whatever reason missing. But then the other one that we I'm really uh, intrigued by is this Diana Model 45, which uh, is pretty cool. These were made between 1978 and 1988. And this one particular one is dated 87 so but uh, just for today this is just a kind of a show show and tell uh, showing you that we have them here and we're going to be doing uh, more testing with them and uh, probably do some head to heads between the two and some of my rifles but uh, these are on loan to me for a short period of time to take a look at brought in by a friend from the gun store and uh, I have a Splatter burst target at about uh, it's about 12 or 13 yards out here. I just paced off uh, like 12 paces, <clears throat> and uh, probably way way too close for this one, and the, you know right at the uh, edge for this one as far as especially with open sights shooting. But uh, that way I could just kind of split the difference on them. Um, just brought up my good old Meister Coogans. But we'll do a group with each one and we'll see how they do. Uh, I have not tested this one at all, so I have no idea where it's going to hit. The uh, 766, I did shoot it a couple times in the garage just to test it and make sure it's actually working. And it is actually doing, uh, the highest number I got was 751 at 10 pumps. So, um, but let's go ahead and uh, give it a whirl. These, uh, these 45s are a, a man-sized gun for sure. We'll do chronograph readings and all that stuff down the road with it, but uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to shoot this one at 3 o'clock just uh, so I can use the center of the bullseye for, for the uh, crossman. Oh, forgot about the automatic safety. All right, that's not bad. Sounds like it's putting out some power. So with a seven grain pellet, this thing guy should be right around 800 feet per second if it's working like it should. We'll be testing all of that down the road. Almost the same hole. <laughs> but like I said, this uh, 12, 13 yards is Hardly any kind of a challenge for this uh, this kind of a beast here. This one's in really nice shape. If I didn't mention it already, this particular one was made in 1987. It is very windy out here today. <clears throat> if it wasn't so windy, I might try stretching this one out a little bit farther, but. We'll get it another day. We got some crazy weather going on around here right now. Uh, it's been very windy and very chilly. We got some wind, I think, blowing right out of Canada, and it's actually bringing the smoke from the Canadian wildfires down here. And uh, it was so thick this earlier this afternoon. It looked like it was just about dusk. It has lightened up quite a bit since then, but it is still, it still smells like a, a campfire anywhere you go outside. And uh, it looks like it's uh, foggy all the way down the, 
neighborhood here. <clears throat> Alrighty, well, that is one good looking group. <clears throat> From the Diana, RWS Diana model. 45. <laughs> Until my friend texted me today and said, hey, you want to try out my Model 45? I never even knew one existed. So, but, uh... <clears throat> Let's go ahead and try this. Uh... I'm not sure where this is going to hit. That's not bad. <laughs> Or a little red dot on this one to play around with and test with. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if this thing shot a better group than the Diana? Oh boy. So far, you might have to be a head to head between these two, <clears throat> about the same power level. I was not expecting it to group like that at uh, with open sights. Looks like about the same size group, really, as the, uh, the Diana, but that's pretty cool. I'll take it. <laughs> There you go, there is the Crossman 766. Like I said, it's the only thing wrong with this, it really is in nice shape. It's just missing that little spring-loaded uh, BB feeder. And the guy that loaned it to me said he wanted me to see if I could get that part, and they're available on eBay, so I'm gonna order those up. And then uh, this Diana is a lot of fun. I think it'll be a lot of fun to maybe shoot some uh, so it's 10 of 87 is the made in West Germany. So it was uh, pretty, pretty nice. So these were <clears throat> Diana's first run at making a Magnum, what they would call a Magnum uh, pellet gun. And then in uh, 1988, they actually rebadged that one as a 34 and bumped the power up on it even more. And, uh, you know, the Magnums now are 1,100, 1,200 feet per second. So, but uh, 800 was unheard of, you know, back in those days. And everybody, the fine work bow and uh, things like that were getting up there. And uh, BSA, I think, had one. But, uh, We'll do a much deeper dive on that one down the road. So, Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. Looks like we got a couple of excellent shooters here to play around with for a little while. And we'll have a lot of fun with it. Until next time, have a great day.